Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's stream. We are looking at the B7K Dark Glass plugin from Neural DSP. So, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're all doing well this fine evening. Uh, this is a very interesting looking plugin and set. Uh, so, Anyone wants to say anything in the chat, feel free to ask questions. I only got this plugin about two hours ago, and I'm very interested to take it for a spin and see what it does. Can everybody hear me okay? I've been trying to test this, and I've been getting audio issues for the past hour because that's how this seems to work. <clears throat> anyway, this plugin, let's flick to the desktop, is the B7K pedal from Dark Glass. And also the Vintage Ultra, so the Vintage Micro Tubes, uh, which is more, well, as the name suggests, vintage. Uh, this is the 1.0.0 release, so this seems to have come out very, very recently indeed. And this, I should have checked, yep, cool, the sound is working right. Uh, so this seems to have a couple of bugs uh, but nothing game-breaking, it's just a little weird at the moment. So right now, uh, the only plugins I am using, this is my trusty jazz bass, and I'll show you the sound of this without anything. I just wanted to do a strong opener there, just to kind of go, whoa! Uh, but I am using my trusty jazz bass, which has an active preamp by John East, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Is quite a jump and it's a seriously powerful pedal in real life this and I've been umming and ahhing about getting something like either a B7K or the vintage microtubes in hardware form for a while and this has probably made up my mind that I'm gonna do it in software because live I've been using the two notes la bass preamp and I absolutely love it for what I do and how I use it uh, which means that this would have been a studio tool anyway. And most of what I do is, quite honestly, in the box these days. I have, you know, mixing desks and all the wonderful stuff, and I just use uh, plugins wherever possible. So this is it. So let's have a look at this. So this, uh, how much is this? Uh, straight in with that. I was gonna, I was gonna leave that till the end, but let's lead with it then. So there's a 14 day free trial, and if you buy it, it's 99 euros. So less than a third of the price of the hardware, I think. Don't quote me on that. And you get both. You get the B7K and the vintage micro tubes. And so buying them both in hardware is something like 600 euros, 600 quid. Uh, so if you really like the sound of these, then that's an absolute bargain. Uh, I'm not being paid to say this, uh, Neural DSP have not been in contact with me, I'm using the 14 day trial just like everybody else. Uh, so that's something, uh, yeah, I so far really like the sound of this and I'll take you through what I've found. But I am not being paid to do this, this is not sponsored, this is not anything other than me going, hey this is cool, because I got an email from Dark Glass themselves yesterday. Uh, telling me about this, and this is the first chance I've had to play with it. Uh, so, there seems to be quite a lot going on in this plugin that you can't really do with the hardware one, which, as a computer based recording engineer, some of this stuff's great. I mean, the obvious one is automation. Um, Dark Glass, let's see, let's see. Um, I had a web page somewhere. If you've not seen the web page, uh, on the Neural DSP website, this seems to be an official plugin. I think I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so this is the Neural DSP website. It seems to be the only plugin they're doing right now, I think. Let's just check that. Yeah, so right now it seems to be the only plugin they do. Uh, and I don't know if this is part of Dark Glass, if this is a separate company entirely who are just starting out but have really nailed it first time um 
there there's some serious stuff in here. And but where was it? There was a quote on the site somewhere, probably under yeah. This is the ultimate vintage and B7K Ultra emulation from Doug Castro, the CEO of Dark Glass. So either they're working together in partnership or they're owned by you know this is not some uh, knockoff that's supposed to kind of sound like it. This seems to be endorsed by Dark Glass. So it had better sound pretty decent. Now, if you've not used a B7K before, I have done a review of the original Dark Glass B7K, uh, which is also on the channel. Check that out. Uh, quite a boutique plugin, I guess, but I, for one, would probably use this on a lot of tracks. I mean, yes, I started off the, the video by doing this. But you don't have to use it this way. And if I back the drive off here, maybe back a little treble off, there's different ways of running with these grunt and attack switches. There's different ways with the grunt and attack switches of shaping the distortion so I could use it much rounder. <laughs> And so that's the B7K. Yeah, periphery sound in a pedal, that's how I set it just then. Sure. Uh, and in fact, the original reason that I was inspired to get a B7K was Adam Get Good from Periphery. Uh, I really like that sound, but it turns out these can be quite versatile little beasts. Uh, and the ultra, especially, you turn the distortion off. <laughs> It's not quite the same as bypass. Because it has this four band EQ that's a really nice, kind of easy to use EQ that works well for bass by having the two mid bands, where a lot of, uh, especially guitar pedals I find, have a mid knob that is in a fixed place and this ultra model you can change the low mids to be 250 hertz 500 or 1k and the high mids to be one and a half k three or seven and a, oh 750 hertz so that's quite a lot that's even some crossover you can essentially switch over the low mids and high mids so That's not the worst EQ I've heard on a bass at all, disregarding the distortion entirely. Uh, now, let's put the attack and grunt in the middle, which is kind of flat. And then there's a blend knob. Goes from the clean side to the, the heavy side and everywhere in between. The level is the level of the distortion, so what you can do is you can have the level of the distortion separate from the drive, so that you can have the blend knob be more of a kind of an equal gain sweep. Now, my system is making a few kind of crunching noises when I'm turning some of these knobs. This is, it's, it's quite processor intensive. Um, it's using nearly 2% of my processor, which for an Intel 6700, uh, which is also doing this live stream at the same time, by the way, and also has the YouTube uh, live dashboard running and about seven tabs of Chrome. Uh, that's kind of to be expected, but something that's worth talking about is the quality slider up here. It's got low, medium, and high. Now, that doesn't mean bad, good, and better. That's to do with oversampling. Oversampling is to do with accuracy of emulation by doing clever things with running 
whatever you feed it at a higher sample rate, which is usually a good thing with distortion because it makes distortion sound more realistic. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm not a DSP engineer. I I know that that's a thing. I am not quite into that world enough to explain exactly what that does. I mean, in my mind, I would always put things on high quality, but the medium quality, which I decided to stick at because I'm running a full mix at the same time, which I'm going to show you at some point, um, it sounds absolutely fantastic to me. And like I said, I've done a B7K demo on this channel, so if you want to just directly compare the two, feel free. Now, this is the B7K, and that is the more aggressive of the channels, but this bottom left switch goes from B7U to VDU, so Vintage Dark Glass Ultra. Now, this isn't just the same pedal with a different colour. This... is a much more growly tone. This is much more what I would consider, you know, like you can get some real Black sabbath -y or Rush or... Back up to standard. So I could go, if I want to use my fingers, I could do the whole Tom Sawyer. And so on and so on. Um, you can take the drive amount down a little. Maybe switch the grunt up to be low scooped a bit. Make the attack a bit flatter. Maybe get more drive back. Yeah, that's not driving very much now, so I'll push it a bit harder. So I've been using my jazz bass up to this point with everything flat. Uh, so let's try changing to just the neck pickup and go for a slightly more P bassy sound. Here's the interesting thing, this being a plugin means that I can think about this in different ways as well. I can use plugins after this, so I can use EQs after it, I can use compressors after it, and so on and so forth. I can also put plugins before it, and this is where I can get very interesting, because um, as Greg in the chat already said, uh, you can get a real periphery sound out of this. But something that I know from being a periphery fan, for example, is that Nolly used to use an Origin Effects Kali 76 pedal in front of the dark glass. And what that is, that is an 1176 style compressor. Now, because this is a plugin, I don't need to go out and buy um, a you know 500 pound compressor or something like that. I can dial up Slate's virtual mix rack and I can put an 1176 in here. This is rooted in, I'll just show you the mixer window. This is here, this is rooted before the Dark Glass Ultra. And so, when I turn this on now, we should get more compression before the B7K, which means that we'll get a more controlled tone, but in a different way to not having as much drive. <laughs> So I can do all sorts of that kind of...
and so on and so forth. I can go absolutely ham with a grindy tone. <laughs> So that's a real focused tone there. And that's just by adding in this compressor before the B7K. Now, this is where we can get really clever because after the B7K, if I turn this on, I can get a little bit of compression after the pedal. Uh, I can get a little more low end in because I find that really driving it makes it sound thin. And then I can do the whole virtual mix bus saturation -y thing and we get this. <laughs> That, to me, is a very usable bass tone indeed. So if I just get rid of these windows, so I'm going to keep everything turned on. This is the old theme tune mix I keep coming back to. So you can really clearly hear the bass in there and I've not done any drastic EQ work uh, apart from a little bit that's on the pedal there. So that's it bypassed. Let's turn it on with no distortion. And then you've got your drive. Just, um, I mean, this this was never going to be a long video, but let's just pull this one out because if if you've ever heard of B7K, then you pretty much knew what you were looking for, and this video hopefully just confirmed to you that this pe this plugin sounds like it should. If you haven't heard the dark before, hopefully this video has introduced you to something a little different. So. Let's just have a bit of fun and crack out the seven string because this one goes way lower. So this one, if I really nail the drive on this, make sure it's properly, yes, yeah, got all the grunt and attack settings how I like them. This should be an absolute monster. Let's get a bit more the low mids in this, because this if I'm going to play Carnival, I need to really uh, bite the low mids out. Maybe not so much high mids, a bit more treble. And the output, let's get, yeah. Let's get the low mids at 1k and push it.
Playing a seven string is flipping difficult at the best of times, but let's just get a bit more of this uh, high mid in there, take the treble down, because it can really start to lift noise out. Or having said that, if I take my hand off this bass, think about how heavy that distortion was, and considering that how crunchy this is, I have not added a gate anywhere in the path. This plugin doesn't have a gate in it. Um, the compressor that I put before doesn't have a gate in it. In fact, let's go back to that because I'm not looking at periphery tone anymore. Let's get rid of that compressor. Let's just not compress quite so much there and let's see what we get now. Um, that's, that's more of a carnival kind of tone. So we get that. I mean, what's the one from the latest Periphery album there? Absalom, yeah. So if I was to really put... Use the back pickup more. on a longer scale bass that would be much easier to do but the point stands and then on the let's go back to the vintage again <laughs> There's a, there's a lot going on with these. Now, it, any questions from the floor? Anybody watching got any special questions? If they do, I'm happy to answer them. If not, I'm going to keep this to be a relatively short stream because I have lots to get on with in terms of filming for the channel and in terms of generally just doing lots of stuff. So, uh, if not, then I shall put down this weapon of mass string destruction oh. seven strings silly anyway <laughs> i mean silly in a good way but ah silly and silly either way you, you look at it Yeah, you can easily, without much work, get a, a very good kind of tool-ish kind of tone, I think, out of the vintage side of things.
think it's more appropriate to try and do if I take the low mids down quite a lot, take the bass up, run the drive quite high, and make sure there's uh, more attacking. This will be more like a more oh, modern, so the 10,000 Days album style tool sound, I'll bet. <laughs> Take a bit of bass out of that. Reset. So it's been a while since I've played that. I've I've not really, I've listened to that album once in maybe the last five years. But I used used to be a massive Tool fan. Uh, but it's interesting to know that all the kind of progressive and progressive metal based tones are all right here, and I didn't have to put much effort in it. In fact, even when the settings weren't quite right, they weren't that far off. So this is great for those kind of guys who want to get a great bass tone and then send their bass parts over to somebody else. You don't even need to be a mix engineer. You can just go, here's the raw DI, here's a bass tone that I want, please use it. And hey, for, like I said, if you've already got an interface, if you're not gonna be going out touring, does it, Jen? Yes. That answers your question, certainly, gents. Uh, but yes, if that's uh, if that's what you want out of a bass tone, and you're like I said, not going to go touring and not need it in a hardware form, then this is probably for you. I'm almost definitely going to buy this uh, because I I quite often find myself being sent files by people, and I just one quite often a sound that I know works in a mix and for me the B7K and sometimes the vintage microtubes work really well in a mix so there we go so without further ado thank you everybody for tuning in I've been I'm Adam Steele and I've been here for the Hot Pole Studios in the studio today as you can see although it's a little untidy uh, I've had a client in today. We've been doing kind of New York style stuff. Uh, how much does it cost? Um, what well, I said at the start of the stream, I may as well say at the end of the stream as well, uh, the B7K Ultra and uh, Vintage Ultra, it's all one plug-in. Whole thing, 99 euros. Uh, something that's worth covering as well. Uh, so, yeah. 99 euros, buy now, yes. And it's going to try and sell it to me. I'm on the 14-day trial, so I'm probably going to buy it. And it's going to be really useful for me, I think. Uh, that's thrown me off. What was I going to say? Blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, um, iLock. Um, this plugin requires an iLock account. It does not require an iLock dongle. So you don't need to get uh, one of those dongles, which I find quite useful, but a lot of people find them really stupid. Uh, you can, as long as you get an iLock account, activate the plugin to your computer, whether it's PC or Mac. And it also, it's VST and AAX, so it's Pro Tools compatible as well. And it's 32-bit and 64-bit, so they've got... Uh, some sort of cross compiler going on so it's compatible with pretty much anything that you're using right now uh, am i using a cab sim after it uh no i'm not using a cab sim at all this is straight up as is if i wanted to use a cab sim i could and that's an interesting thing actually that's worth talking about thank you greg in the chat 
that the V2 versions of these pedals, I don't know if the vintage one's out, I know the B7K version 2 pedal is out now. The only difference that I know of with it is that it's got an inbuilt cab loader, like an impulse response loader. If I wanted to, I could just do that here. So actually, let's do that, just, just for demo's sake. So that's the sound of things without any sort of cab sim. Let's just move that off my screen, because that's in the way. Uh, and let's go to, let's make the phone out. Let's add in, I'm just trying to think, what do I use to add impulse responses these days? I add re-cabinet. Re-cabinet is my go-to for adding cabs in. So let's add in the old uh, red wires Ampeg with a 421 on the cab. So this is now going through a cab. So if that's that's got quite a lot of extra bass in, so I'll just dial that out there, dial a bit of low mids out, add a bit of treble. Now, most people would probably EQ that afterwards, and I'm going to do that. That needs lifting, really. Too much, too much. Dial it back a bit. Okay. So, yes, to answer your question, I was not using a cab sim, but I can. And because this is in software, I don't need some sort of hardware update to be able to do that. I can just add that in as a plugin after the last plugin. So, yeah, I think that's going to call it for today. Hopefully, that's answered everybody's questions. If anyone has a question after this live stream is over, feel free to add that in the comments below uh, because I'll try and answer questions for people. I, I try and answer whatever I can. The channel's getting a little busy now. We're heading towards 10,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm hoping to do a giveaway at 10,000 subscribers. So let you know about that as soon as I get more details concrete and not just pie in the sky stuff. So for now, that is me. Thank you, everybody. And I'll see you in the next stream. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.